Hello guys, today we're going to be doing the endocrine system review. I've got a little bit of a different setup here, as you can tell. I'm kind of changing my uh, office around. And hey, I got my new my new model right here. <laughs> I think I'm either going to call him He-Man or who knows, maybe maybe I'll name him Mark Anthony. That's my favorite name, Marco Antonio. <laughs> my new boyfriend anyway i'm going to be doing the endocrine system review today for those of you that need that review i won't take too much time saying hello i see some of you already on welcome it's been a while right since i've been on live doing any kind of a review but um can anyone tell me if you guys can see hi from the netherlands wow well hello there nice to see you um can you guys hear me okay i've got my microphone on and sometimes I have a tendency to yell and I don't want to yell today. Can anybody tell me? Can you hear me? Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and we'll get started. I hear you. Oh, Maria. Thank you. Indonesia. Well, thank you very much. We'll get started. You guys can hear me. I've got a different setup here and it's going to be kind of hard for me to get around this desk. So here we go, guys. The objective today is to be learning all the endocrine glands and their purposes. So we're going to list the anatomic structures and physiologic processes and related endocrine system and describe its hormones and hormonal regulation systems and their secretions and the effects of the hormones on the body. Uh, in comparing the endocrine system, you know, uh, with a pituitary, I mean, with a pituitary, sorry, I got ahead of myself here. Okay, let me see. The endocrine system works with the nervous system. They work in conjunction. As you remember, the last time I did a review was the nervous system. The nervous system is the fastest. It can travel, send messages up to 260 miles per, you know, per second. And, and uh, um, the endocrine system is the slowest, the slowest system. It works with the bloodstream. It, uh, it coordinates uh, body functions. The nervous system uses neurotransmitters and the endocrine system uses hormones, but they work together. Many cells in the body have receptors for both uh, neurotransmitters and hormones, but depending on whether the key fits, it's going to let either the neural or the hormone in. So I, I want to show you guys this, and this is where the setup here is different than the way I had it before, but... I want to show you if you can see here, maybe because the light you're not going to be able to see, but comparing the endocrine and the nervous system, as you can see, here's an endocrine cell, the little blue circle, and it releases the hormones through the interstitial fluid, and then it's picked up and carried by the bloodstream. And as you can see, the bloodstream targets every cell in the body. However, only the target cell that has the right key to let it will let it in not it's not going to affect every cell in your body obviously just the one where the key fits so the endocrine system is the slowest system the nervous system is the fastest system a neuron through the axon will release neurotransmitters and there's a target cell so then the target cell opens up opens the key the key opens the lock and it can go in there so this is just to show you that the endocrine system and the nervous system work together okay so that you guys can see that there's a yin to every yang there's you know that's the tai chi you know what when if there's a up there's a down if there's a day there's a night if there's cold there's hot and this our body works the same way so there are two types of glands in the endocrine system one most of the glands in the uh, endocrine system are endocrine glands are ductless they don't have ducts they don't have you know little holes that release the hormones it secretes hormones into the bloodstream through the interstitial fluid uh, and the exocrine glands actually there's one the pancreas is the only one that's an exocrine gland in the endo in the endocrine system exocrine glands are like your pseudophorous glands which are your 
sweat glands, your sebaceous glands, which secrete oil, you know, like when you get acne, and salivary glands, which secrete saliva. So those are exocrine glands and memory glands. Oh, look, here we have an example. He's a uh, he, she. He said he, she, because when we are using it in class, we can show like the memory glands. It's a gland and it secretes, you know, for, for uh, lactation. So this also is an exocrine gland because it'll secrete milk to the outside through little holes through the nipple. So exocrine glands have ducts, whereas endocrine glands do not. Um, endocrinology is the study of the endocrine system. And usually endocrinologists, when you go see them, they, you know, they handle like diabetes, thyroid problems, because they all have to do with the endocrine system. Oh, I want to show you again the major endocrine glands. And I also want to show you that books make mistakes. Oh, who's saying hello? Susana, excelente día, saludos. Oh, bienvenida, someone from Latin America. I want to show you, this is a picture of the major endocrine glands. And this book forgot the pineal gland. It's got the hypothalamus is a location in the midbrain, okay? And that is really the trigger that triggers the pituitary gland and tells it what to do. There's neural releases that hypothalamus receives and gives it to the pituitary gland, and that way the pituitary gland knows what to do. So here it's the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, pineal gland, should have been right there, but it's not. Then the thyroid, parathyroids are within the thyroid, four little, circle, four little circles within the thyroid. The adrenal glands would sit on top of the kidneys. And usually your kidney is, um, your right kidney is a little bit lower than the left kidney because of the liver and the right lung has three lobes instead of two in the left side. The left lung has two lobes, the, the right lung has three lobes, and then the liver right there. So your right kidney sits a little bit lower than the, than the left one. It usually sits close to the QL muscle, to the quadratus lumborum, as you can see on the posterior side right here, the quadratus lumborum would be right there. And a lot of people think that they might have uh, kidney pain, and a lot of times it's the QL, the muscle. So anyway, I'm getting off topic, guys. Sorry. And then you have your pancreas. Your pancreas is the only one in the endocrine system that's both. That's endocrine gland and exocrine gland, okay? So um, the ovaries that, you know, you ovulate and regulate men menstrual cycles and the testes. So those are the eight major glands, okay? So you guys can know. And, th and they're very small, guys. You know, the endocrine glands, if you put them all together and weight them, they weigh less than half a pound. They're really not big at all. They're very small, but they're very, very powerful and potent. So back, back in the day, you know, um, they didn't really know much about the endocrine system. It's, the endocrine system has only been a study, studied maybe it, here in the East. Now, in, I mean, in the West. In China, they have recordings of use of the endocrine system like 3,000 years ago. Here in, in, the, in the West, we only have been knowing about the endocrine system and studied the endocrine glands in the past 100 years. As a matter of fact, the word hormone didn't come about until about 100 years ago. So that goes to show you that we were kind of a little bit behind on this. Like Hippocrates, the, the father of... Uh, of medicine, Hippocrates, the way he could tell if people had diabetes is he would literally taste the urine of his patients because it has a certain sweetness to it and a certain smell. People that have diabetes have a certain smell too. So anyway, that's just a little bit of trivial information that I don't know. I just like to talk. <laughs> Anyway, so the anatomy of the endocrine system is the hypothalamus, which would be right here inside your head, the pituitary, the pineal, which are also inside the, the brain, the thyroid, 
which are right in front of the trachea. The parathyroids are in the, par in the thyroid. The adrenals, which sit on top of the kidneys, the pancreatic islets, and the ovaries, testes, and the hormones. Those are all the parts and anatomy of the um, endocrine system. The physiology is the hor it produces hormones and it secretes hormones into the bloodstream. It regulates metabolism. Is what he it helps you stay stable. If it wasn't for the endocrine system, it would be off balance. It, the endocrine system is what regulates and keeps you at an even keel. If you're too hot, then it you know then it pre conserves the blood in yourself so that you don't lose any more you know any more. Um, no, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. If you're too hot, it helps you perspire and dilate your blood vessels and to the surface so that you can release the heat. And if you're cold, then it constricts your blood vessels so that you don't, you know, lose too much uh, heat. So it adapts to temperatures, it adapts to blood pressure, it keeps everything even keel. The physiology of the endocrine system is really to keep you alive because it keeps everything in balance. It's uh, adapts to stress you know it's one of the major ones for that releases um, hormones in order like your fight and flight response your adrenaline you know like if you if you get uh, scared or if you something happens that you need to fight and flight so it's for stress adaptation it regulates the chemical composition and fluids like electrolytes in your body through the kidneys and it regulates reproductive processes. If it wasn't for our endocrine system and our ovaries and our and the men's testes, you know, that's we wouldn't be able to reproduce. And you know, lactin. And anyway, we'll get into each one specifically. I'm getting ahead of myself. So hormones are the chemical messengers. They're chemical messengers that regulate physiologic activity of other cells. It influences growth metabolism, digestion, reproduction, and mood. And there are target cells, cells with receptors corresponding to hormones. So what this means is that they are released. The hormones are, let's say the anterior pituitary releases a hormone, which releases six hormones, but let's say it releases one hormone and then in the brain, and then it goes to that target cell to the place where it's going to it's going to tell the thyroid okay we need to produce more calcium or we need to produce you know uh, keep iodine in check so the target cells are the ones that they're going to target like they're released may probably in you know in the pituitary anterior and then they're going to go target another cell and tell them what to do so those are the target cells and remember, they got to have the key to receive those receptors. If it doesn't have the key, it'll just keep going through your bloodstream until it finds the correct cell that fits with a key to open the door and receive that message from the pituitary. Okay, hormones are produced by tissues, generally act on nearby cells. These are prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are uh, hormones that need to be released right then and there okay like the adrenals let's say that you have to fight and flight you get scared somebody's gonna jump you or a tiger comes out of the woods or anything like that then right away you know it's gonna release the uh, the hormones for to dilate your pupils you know the uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine to fight or flight so that needs to be fast okay so some of them are local you know, local in the local nearby cells and affects the nearby cells. It helps regulate smooth muscle and um, inflammatory responses also. Hormones release regulated by, re by several mechanisms. There's three types of mechanisms, the negative feedback, hormonal regulation, and neural regulation. And let me talk a little bit about those because I actually like to talk about the negative feedback. Most of the, um, the regulation in our body is through negative feedback. And what negative feedback means is that, that something's off, something's in the negative, so it's got to bring it back up, okay? Kind of like the thermostat in your house. Uh, you set it, let's say, to 75, 
and um, it's getting too hot. So now you got to, you know, it, it doesn't let it go above 75 because then it turns on. If it gets to 76, the air conditioner is going to turn on or vice versa with the heat. If you have it set at, you know, at 75 and then it starts getting too cold, then the heat's going to turn on. So what negative feedback means is that if something's going down or something's going up too high, then the, then there's a hormone that's going to tell it to even it out, to bring it back up. And then you say, well, how is this important? Well, it's very important. If your blood pressure is going too high, and you, then it's going to send, you know, a, a, a hormone, an anti-diuretic, you know, or, or a diuretic hormone from your kidneys to be able to bring it back to balance. Okay, let's say you're in the middle of the desert or you're not drinking enough water. You know, so then now your your body saying, hey, this person's getting really dehydrated. They might not drink water. They might be in the middle of the desert. So then it sends an anti-diuretic hormone from your kidneys to stop you from urinating too much to keep that the little bit of water that you have left inside so it brings it back to balance let's say your blood pressure let's say your blood pressure is really getting really 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 low so your body receives that signal and it says okay let's uh let's stop urinating so that it can bring up the blood pressure so what it does like antidiuretic antidiuretic means against urination diuretic is for urination like like when i had um high blood pressure at the, you know many years ago that i got diagnosed with it the first thing they gave me is a diuretic to help me urinate more so that it would bring down my blood pressure so negative feedback regulation is one's high and one's low and it's trying to break bring it to into balance again Okay, that's what that means. Most of the functions in our body are through negative feedback. There's very few that are positive feedback regulation. Uh, one of them is, um, you know, for the mammary glands, a woman that has just given birth. Um, if the more she nurses, the more it stimulates that um, prolactin hormone to produce more milk. That wants to produce more. So let's say the milk production is here and then prolactin kicks in and it raises up so it's to go up negative feedback is to bring it back to balance whether this one's high and this one's low it brings it back to balance so it's even out again and the most of them in our body are negative feedback regulation hormonal regulation is through the hormones it releases into the bloodstream and then the hormones regulate it Neural regulation, neural meaning from the brain, from uh, the nervous system, it's a signal like the hypothalamus is neural regulation. It receives um, a message from the nervous system and then it triggers. So think of the hypothalamus as the trigger. It receives a message from the nervous system to trigger the anterior uh, pituitary to release a hormone that it needs. So that's what the difference of those three means. Negative feedback, hormonal regulation, and neural regulation. That's the way the nervous system works. Uh, oh, I got ahead with a negative feedback regulation is the release of hormones moving levels in the opposite direction. Glands secrete more or less to maintain homeostasis. Most common is the most common method of hormone regulation Positive fee, uh, feedback systems also regulate hormones, but it's the least, uh, the least uh, used and rare. Hormones released by one gland regulates the hormones and released of another gland. So remember, it has a target where it's going to. Tropic hormones uh, that stimulate hormonal activity of endocrine glands. So most anterior uh, pituitary hormones are tropic hormones because they go and they affect another. So the, the target hormones are known as um, tropic. They're going to go affect another one. The anterior pituitary releases six different hormones and they go to six different parts of the body. I think there's a picture here. Okay. The neural regulation... Sorry, guys, I always get ahead of myself. Hormones released by nerve impulses 
like epinephrine and norepinephrine allows faster response times compared with other hormone regulating systems okay the hypothalamus so now we're going to get into the uh into the horn into the the glands the hypothalamus is located in the diencephalon of the brain, secretes hormones that stimulate and inhibit release of anterior pituitary hormones. The two hypothalamic hormones stored, because it does also store two in the posterior pituitary, is the oxytocin. Oxytocin is the one for labor and is the, for reproduction and to, the, the make you feel good. It's the one that one makes you feel cuddly. That's what makes a mom bond with her child. Supposed to, supposed, they call it sometimes the love hormone, the oxytocin that's released and it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like cuddling. That oxytocin also releases, <clears throat> uh, I know like in men, Animals, like the kittens and the puppies they can smell where the nipples of the mom is by a hor the hormone that's released so they can smell it and they can go and latch on to the nipple you know for them to nurse and survive um, it also releases the antidiuretic hormone when your blood pressure is dropping and you need to stop urination so it sends it you know by neural um, release signals it from the hypothalamus so that you don't you know continue to urinate if you are not taking in enough water too so the pituitary gland has two parts the anterior and the posterior the uh, and the anterior is known as the adenohypophysis and is the largest lobe of the pituitary the posterior is known as the neural hypothesis because that one's stimulated by the nerve to send a signal in order to stimulate the hormone releases so let me show you real quick i know guys if you're not into amp and you're not nerds it gets very uh, uh, dull to learn about this but you need to know this i'm sorry we need to know this all this information you know in order for us to be good massage therapists and to find out a little bit more about the body so here you see the anterior pituitary okay here's the posterior which which uh holds the antidiuretic hormone which affects the kidneys and the oxytocin which affects the mammary glands and the uterus smooth muscle in order for the mom to go into labor and the anterior secretes six so it secretes um, the ho growth hormone for bones for you to be able to grow the adenocorticotropic hormone which is in the adrenal cortex the thyroid stimulating hormone which affects the thyroid the gonadotropin hormones which affects the testes and the ovaries and prolactin which affects the mammary gland so it's got one two three four five six in the anterior pituitary and it holds two stores two in the posterior part that they get a neural message to be released because these are more for emergencies for quick quick these are slower remember it's very slow if you if you know anybody that takes um any medication for the thyroid it usually takes about a month for them to start noticing the difference of how they feel because these are slow acting these are for emergency purposes you know if a mother goes into labor you don't want it to take you know a month for the for the hormone to get there so it's got to be quick if your blood pressure is dropping you you want that antidiuretic hormone to get there really quick so these are uh, stimulated by the nervous system to send a message to the posterior from the hypothalamus to send a, a message and say okay we need to release this you know really quick you know instead of taking a slower route with it with this so as you can tell this the pituitary um, gland is known as the master gland the pituitary gland is known as the master gland because it's well it's the one that controls almost everything sorry I've got my microphone on and I'm trying not to trip through here <laughs> okay let's keep going so the uh, anterior pituitary hormones are the adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulates adrenal cortex to secrete hormones especially cortisol uh, cortisol you know you don't want to have too much cortisol in your body for too long 
you know, cortisol is the one for when you're under stress that helps you adapt to stress. And if you're always releasing, you know, the, um, the cortisol and you don't exercise or you keep it inside or sometimes our, you know, our, our fight or flight instinct, you know, our sympathetic system kicks in and we don't do anything about it, you know. So all of that cortisol stays inside and that really wrecks havoc in your body if you have too much of it and continuously and that's when i tell you guys you know be careful what you watch you know be careful what shows you watch the news all of that because it really does affect your nervous system and your your um endocrine system okay the anterior pituitary also secretes the gh the growth hormone which stimulates protein synthesis in the muscle and bone so it's for growth for maintenance, repair of your, you know, if you break a bone and for metabolism. It also secretes the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormones. Uh, follicle, the FSH is the follicle stimulating hormone, stimulates estrogen production and develops of ovarian follicles. Um, every female is born with all the, ov the ovums that they're gonna have throughout their life. So let's say you're born with 30,000 ovums but one of them only matures a month from each side of the, either your, your right ovary or your left ovary. So the follicle stimulating hormone is the one that tells that follicle to stimulate one a month, okay? So in order for that ovum to grow and mature and be released is, you know, is the FSH. And the luteinizing hormone stimulates the estrogens and the progesterones for that, uh, for that ovum to be, you know, you start ovulation with it through the luteinizing hormone, okay? So you need both of these hormones, one to mature the ovum, the other one if it's not, you know, um, if no sperm connects with it, then you get your, your menstrual cycle and then it's released and it starts all over again. So these hormones really need to be working together. You know, that's why I said it's so important for us to really take care of our body and make sure that everything's even keel. We have every hormone available to us to keep us in balance at all times. The gonadotropins, gonads, means ovaries and testes. It's a collective term, the FSH and LH. For, so it stands for follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone because it also stimulates testosterone and sperm motility in order for sperm to be able to swim. It only has to swim like uh, six to seven inches in the, uh, you know, to get to the fallopian tube. But, you know, there's, you know, 30,000 little sperms that are released and they have to swim and fight and they're so, so small that it's an effort, guys. You know, that's why I always say we are a miracle because out of those millions of sperms, you're the only one that made it. You know, you're the only one, you know, a lot of them died along the way because of the acidity of the uterus. You know, a lot of them didn't make it. They, they weren't fighters. I mean, if you are watching me right now, you are a winner. I mean, I get so excited when I think of all these things that we're a walking miracle, guys. So stay positive. Another one that's released from the anterior pituitary is the prolactin. Pro means for, lactin is lactation. So it's for, to stimulate the mammary gland so it can produce more milk. And remember, that's a positive feedback because the more the baby nurses, the more, um, you know, uh, prolactin is uh, made and then the more milk you have. It also produces melanocyte stimulating hormones and it increases melanin production. Like if you've been out in the sun getting a tan, it, it will improve, you know, the protection against the sun. Now, the posterior, remember, decreases urine production and it raises your blood pressure. So it's the antidiuretic hormone, the ADH, and the oxytocin, which stimulates uterine contractions in pregnancy and labor and delivery. 
It stimulates milk expression from mammary glands and facilitates sexual arousal and recognition, trust, and bonding. And it's called the love hormone or the cuddle hormone. And it's for babies to bond with their moms or, you know, this is why um, people bond together too. It's the oxytocin. The pineal gland, which looks like a little pine nut, is located in the posterior pituitary in the diencephalon of the brain. It produces melatonin, which regulates your circadian rhythm, usually about when the sun goes down. When the sun goes down, then your body releases melatonin, which tells you, okay, it's time to go to sleep. It starts making you sleepy. And even though it's not harmful to take melatonin, your body doesn't produce it as much. What's really better is for you to get on a regular, you know, uh, bedtime uh, sleep schedule so that it doesn't mess with your uh, internal 24-hour 20 cycle. So that's for melatonin. Did I say melatonin or melanin? Sorry, I probably said melanin, but it's melatonin. The pineal gland, uh, look, the, the posterior secretes melatonin. The pineal gland. Okay. The thyroid hormone located inferior to the larynx, anterior to the trachea, produces the T3, T4, TSH, and the calcitonin. So let's say it decreases blood calcium levels by stimulating osteoclastic. Oh, you, my students should know this. Osteoblastic activity. Osteo means bone. Blastic means, you know, build. So it increases calcium storage in the bone. So let's say that you have plenty of calcium going through your system. So it's going to just build up the bone, uh, the bone cells of calcium, okay? But if you have low calcium, then the parathyroid are going to send, you know, a message and say the body needs calcium. So osteoclast break down the bone to release that calcium into your bloodstream to be able to take it to where it's needed, whether it's your heart or, or your muscles. Your muscles need a lot of calcium. So they work together. The thyroid and parathyroid work together to keep your calcium levels in check. So the parathyroid hormone increases blood calcium levels by stimulating osteoclastic. Osteo means bone, clastic means crush. So it crushes the bone to be able to release the calcium into your bloodstream. The adrenals, you've got the adrenals uh, release uh, corticosteroids, mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, and gonadocorticoids. And what, what you can remember about this is like minerals have to do with like salt. Think of minerals like salt controls minerals and water balance. Uh, gluco glucocorticoids regulates carbohydrates. So glucose, think of like sugars, okay? So glucocorticoids regulate carbohydrates and proteins and fat metabolism. And uh, cortisol activates uh, anti-stress and anti-inflammatory um, pathways. Gonadocorticoids uh, produce sex hormones. So gonads, think of this, the, the sex hormones, so it supports sexual functions. So minerals would be, you know, think of the salt, the sodium, the glucose, think of the glucose, the sugars, and gonadal, think of the, uh, that it supports the reproduction, e estrogens and androgens. Adrenal medulla is uh, neuro, uh, neurohormones. The term medulla means, um, term for medullary hormones. It produces epinephrine and norepinephrine, norepinephrine, both enhance and prolong physiological effects of stress. And you don't want to be releasing these all the time. You want to save it for when you really are have to fight or flight. In other words, you need we need to lead a lead a, a stress-free lifestyle. <laughs> well, stress is good too, but not to an extreme. Okay, uh, pancreatic islets are secrete are inferior to the stomach they secrete alpha cells beta cells and delta cells the alpha says the al sorry my mouth is getting dry 
I've been talking too fast. The alpha cells secrete glucagon. So uh, let's say you are hypoglycemic and your blood pressure is dropping. Glucagon is going to send a, a signal to the liver to release um, the sugars to bring your sugar back up. That's a negative feedback. That's another one. So if your sugar is too low, glucagon is going to be released in order to bring it back up to an, you know, to an even keel. Beta cells secrete insulin. Let's say your sugar is too high. Let's say you had a whole cake. And so insulin is produced, uh, you know, secreted to, to bring down the sugar levels back down. And people that have diabetes, their uh, pancreas doesn't release insulin either. They don't have any more insulin, you know, production, and that's when they have to inject. Or it's not, you know, as much, and they just have to take a medication. So I, it, it depends on the level, okay? Glucagon increases blood glucose levels, and it stimulates liver to release stored glucose, Insulin decreases blood glucose levels, stimulating liver, skeletal muscle, and fats to absorb glucose from the blood. Estrogen. Let's talk about the ovarian hormones. Estrogen, development of female secondary hormones. Um, you know, like your breasts start, you know, um, growing and, you know, axillary hair. It uh, progesterone. Uh, pregnancy pr promoting hormone maintains endometrium inhibits uterine contractions relaxin alters connective tissue relaxes uterus to produce risks of miscarriage or premature birth it also relaxes the pelvic ligaments to assist in childbirth and relaxin uh, is mothers that have that are pregnant usually towards the end of their pregnancy their joints start hurting you know a lot their back because those ligaments are relaxing in order for them to give way for to open the birth canal so it's very real you know that women start feeling more aches and pains to the end of their you know their pregnancy uh the testes and hormones the interstitial cells of ladig are the endocrine cells scattered between the testicular tubules and they produce testosterone to develop secondary characteristics in the male okay there's organs that have endocrine cells okay the kidneys the thymus the prostate the placenta the mucosa the gastrointestinal tract the heart and these are needed for, you know, to keep us alive, to, you know, to send messages. So the kidneys produce erythropoietin, an EPO, stimulates production of the red blood cells and the bone marrow to increase oxygen. So let's say that the uh, um, kidneys pick up that there's not enough red oxygen in, in, your, in your blood, in your circulatory system. So what it's going to do is it's going to secrete erythropoietin to increase the uh the the blood formation in the bone in the bone marrow to bring more more oxygen through your blood renin is another hormone that increases your blood pressure so if your blood pressure is dropping then renin is produced to bring your blood pressure up another negative feedback to bring you back up to homeostasis and this is in the kidneys the thymus oops I just hit my microphone, but the thymus is right here and it produces, that's where the T cells from the bone mature. The T cells mature in the thymus. They produce lymphocyte production of B and T cells and their differentiation. Prostatic hormones, they produce relaxant, enhances the motility for fertilization in the semen. Placenta also has hormones. They produce estrogens, progesterones to keep that baby fed and, 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 and healthy. Human uh, gonadotropin, placental lactogens, and relaxin again to the, let me see, work synergistically with progesterone to maintain the pregnancy. And did I say baby? I didn't mean to say baby. I meant the fetus. <laughs> Placental is to feed the fetus inside Okay, now in the large, in the small intestine, in the gastrointestinal mucosa produces some hormones too. Gastrin secretes gastric juices. 
Cholecystokonin emits bile and pancreatic enzymes into the small intestine. Secretin secretes alkaline liquid from pancreas to neutralize acidic chyme. The chyme is the liquid already formed in the stomach after it's broken everything down. The ghrelin stimulates appetite or the hormone, horm the hunger hormone. It's found, high levels of ghrelin are found in people that have been fasting or that don't eat, you know, that are starving, you know, the hunger hormone. So I remember when my mom was, um, oh, towards, towards the end, she wouldn't eat anymore. She had lost her appetite, you know, and they, I remember that they gave her that hormone, uh, the ghrelin, you know, to stimulate her appetite because she just didn't want to eat anymore. The gastric inhibitor, inhibitory polypeptide inhibits gastric secretions and uh, insulin release to lower blood glucose levels. So the heart hormones are the atrial natriuretic hormone or the a ANH stimulates urine production to decrease your blood pressure. That's what I was talking about, that most of the time doctors give you a diuretic. If your blood pressure is high and it's the first time, you know, your blood pressure is high, they try to control it with a, with a diuretic. And all it does is, you know, um, make you urinate a little bit more. It's caused by overstretching, let me see, caused by overstretching of pressure sensitive receptors in the atrium. Okay, so when the atrium, which are the, uh, the chambers, the receiving chambers of your heart, when they are overstretching, that means that it's putting too much pressure, your blood pressure is high. So that's where it stimulates and releases the atrial natriuretic, <laughs> I can't talk anymore, natriuretic hormone. <laughs> Okay, so I think I think that's it, guys. I made it. It's it's all so um, technical words, but remember, you have eight endocrine endocrine glands. They are mainly uh, they they don't have uh, ducts. You know, they secrete hormones into the bloodstream, so they get carried through the bloodstream. The hypothalamus is the trigger is the trigger that sends the messages from the brain, you know, to the anterior pituitary to release other affecting, you know, um, glands. So anyway, that's the endocrine system in a nutshell, guys. I know some of you really need a review. And I know some of my, actually, Jessica, I'm dedicating this to you because she just had a baby. Congratulations, her first baby girl. And uh, she couldn't attend class the other day because of that. And so this is for her. She missed the endocrine system. So I just want to dedicate this to her. And I'll see you guys the next time. I have all of the other videos. So please look at almost all the, um, all the other system systems already. I've already done them. The only one I think I haven't done is the uh, urinary system. But I'll do that next time. And after that, that's it. I'm done. All the 11 systems are on YouTube already. If you want to review, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have all kinds of videos from Tai Chi to, you know, um, learning how to work on the rotator cuff or uh, please check me out. And also, I would appreciate it if you share. I'm trying to build up my channel too because with this whole thing going on, you know, um, things are kind of slow in other areas like my office. So anyway, guys, I just want to, I'm so glad I connected with you. Thank you for your time. Enjoy. And until the next time, create a great day.